Water quality, Wednesday, January 20th. This is about where we left off last day. I had warned you that we we're going to go through these uh, equations and do some examples. Some of these equations are more important than others, so I'm going to highlight some of those now, which are the most important ones. So molarity is important. Percent mass is important. Over here, parts per million is important and parts per billion, just not as much so. Parts per trillion, I will never ask you in this class how to do. And the other big one is milla equivalence. What I'm gonna do now is go through some problems and show you how to do some of these questions so you know how to do them for the test. So here's the first one. It says we have 30 grams of sodium chloride dissolved into a 500 ml solution. So this should be pretty standard issue, uh, first year chemistry for you. So uh, first thing we need to do is figure out the number of moles. Number of moles is represented by N. So we're gonna take the mass, so 30 grams, and divide that by the molecular weight, which is 58.4 grams per mole. So number of moles I'm getting is 0 0.51 moles. So the concentration, it's a big C, is of course um, the number of moles divided by the volume, that's 0 0.51 moles, divided by the volume, which in this case is 500 milliliters, which is of course 0 0.5 liters. So my answer is 1.03 moles per liter, which is the same as 1.03 moles per liter, which is the big M. So just take note on my PowerPoint slides. I do usually try to put the answers down there. You still need to know how to get the answer uh, so that uh, that way, if you're practicing on your own, you're able to do so. So notice there's a second question here of which you can see the answers. The answer is no. So what does this mean? So you can see in the first, um, question, it's saying we have 30 grams into 500 mil solution, right? So that's a 500 mil solution total. In the second, I actually have 500 milliliters of water plus 30 grams of sodium chloride. So this is actually going to be about 530 mils overall. So the concentration won't be the same since the volume is not the same. Here's another question. This is asking you to do the reverse. In this case, what you're going to do is try to figure out the number of grams that are needed from the solution concentration. So first thing we do is figure out our number of moles. And in this case here, the number of moles is equal to the volume times the concentration. So 0 0.25 liters, that's what 250 mils is, times 0 0.8 moles Per liter. Maybe I will use the, uh, the units like this because we can see that the liters are going to cancel out liter over here on the top and liter over here on the bottom. They cancel out. So that's going to give me the number of moles. So number of moles is 0 0.2 moles. Then we're going to figure out the mass. And so the mass is um, the number of moles times the molecular weight. So We'll just use MW for that. So 0 0.2 moles times 120 grams per mole. So 24 grams. So hopefully that's pretty straightforward and you've seen that before in Chem 101 and in high school chemistry. What you may not have seen is actually percent mass. And uh, so let's show you how to do that. The formula for percent mass looks like this. So percent mass is the number of grams of solute divided by the total grams of solution. So I guess I could say mass, but I usually do this in grams and then times 100 to make it a percent. So this is a percent mass. So it's asking us uh, how much water and sucrose are required to make uh, two liters of a 12% solution of sucrose. So what I need to do is basically fill in this equation with the values that I have. 
So I have 12. I don't have the mass of the solute. I'll just uh, maybe represent it like that. And I don't have the mass of the, um, the amount of water yet, but I do have the total solution. So here's just a little aside. We have two liters of water. That equals two kilograms of water. And a kilogram of water is a thousand grams. So that's 2,000 grams of solution. So I'm going to put 2,000 here, and we're going to multiply that by 100. So I'm going to manipulate that solution. So the mass of the solute equals 12 times 2,000 divided by 100. And that is 240 grams. In that case, that's the solute. So that is of sucrose. So the last thing to figure out is how much water we need. So the water is 2,000 grams minus 240 grams. So that's 1,760 grams. And I can convert that to a volume, which is, of course, 700, 1,760 milliliters. So um, molarity and percent weight are useful uh, in their own ways. But what is very useful when we're looking at water quality and dissolved ions is parts per million. So part per million is one milligram per liter. So I'll show you why that's a part per million. One milligram is a thousandth of a gram. So that's supposed to be a little one. And one gram is a thousandth of a kilogram. So that means we have 0 0.000001 kilograms which is the same as 10 to the minus six kilograms. So that is one millionth of a kilogram, which is of course one millionth of a liter. And so that's why a part per million is a milligram per liter. So you're gonna see both of these used interchangeably, parts per million and milligram per liter. And it's gonna be assumed that you know that uh, they are in, in fact the same thing. So uh, sometimes the concentrations are extra small. So we might use a part per billion, which is a little bit smaller. And once in a while, I think I've only ever seen this once, people will use parts per trillion. We won't use that in class, our class because it's very, very rare. So one thing of note, PPT. Sometimes it's parts per trillion and I have seen one time I saw it meant parts per thousand. So if you ever see PPT, um, just be warned, uh, it could have multiple meanings. But we will focus on parts per million and parts per trillion in water quality. So by the way, if you are um, interested in the imperial system, so in the US, they are using gallons. In this class, we will be using uh, the metric system at almost all times. Um, but uh, it is worth it to know. You may see sometimes funny units. So GPG, for example, is a pretty common unit used in the States, which is grains per gallon. And it's kind of on the same order of magnitude as, uh, as uh, parts per million. So once in a while, that one does pop up. Just not in this class. So here's an example. It says we have um, 0 0.13 grams of nitrates in 200 liters of river water. So uh, basically it's asking us to calculate the parts per million and the parts per billion. So parts per million is of course milligrams per liter. And so that is 0 0.13 grams per 200 liters, but we want milligrams per liter. So I'm gonna go 130 milligrams because I'm multiplying grams times a thousand per 200 liters. And so I am getting 0 0.65 milligrams per liter. 
which is 0 0.65 ppm. So to get parts per billion, we take our parts per million and we multiply it by a thousand. So 1000 times 0 0.65 is of course 650 parts per billion. Okay, so hopefully that's relatively straightforward. Um, one more calculation for you is uh, converting um, 2000 uh, parts per million to percent. So percent of course is parts per hundred and you can do that conversion that way. Uh, the other way I can do the conversion is I just go back to my formula for percent. So remember that percent is the mass of solute in grams divided by the total mass times 100. So what I'm going to do for that is um, I'm going to take 2,000 milligrams. And the total mass is, of course, uh, one liter, which is one liter is one kilogram times 100. So converting everything to grams, that is two grams divided by 1,000 grams times 100, which is 0.2%. So I'm just showing you can convert between these things uh, it's just important to know certain formulas, like this formula here is, of course, an important one to know. So what I want to talk about now is something that's a little bit harder to think about, it's some, but it's really important for water quality. It's a little bit old school, but you still see it in water quality, and uh, sometimes you still see it in the pharmaceutical industry as well. And uh, the whole idea behind mill equivalence is thinking about how much something will react. So if you take a look at this example here, uh, calcium has a charge of two plus. And so it's gonna react twice with a, uh, an ion like chloride, which has one negative charge. So you get calcium chloride that looks like this. So that's what we think of when we think about mill equivalence is we're thinking about how many times something will react. So if it uh, only has a, a positive one or positive negative charge, then the answer is one and it makes the math super easy. Uh, but something like calcium, we think about it as a, as a one to two or a two to one kind of thing because it, it's gonna react twice. And so I'll show you some formulas and uh, the very first one I'm gonna show you is not the most important, I'm gonna, um, but I'll, uh, it's important to sort of understand what's going on here. So it's saying here half a mole of calcium equivalent uh, is one equivalent because half a mole, multiply that by two, because uh, it reacts twice is going to be one. So one half times two is one. So as I mentioned, uh, this is seen all over the place. Here's just an example. You can see this is showing uh, mill equivalents, uh, actually percent of total mill equivalents. And uh, you see this all over the place in the water industry. Um, looks like they have three different samples. They have the anions over here and the cations over here for the samples. And you can take a look at this and you can see that chloride is the most common anion, for example. I'll come back to this one in a minute. So there's the formula. That is what a mill equivalent per liter is. So if you remember, um, when we were figuring out uh, that very back, that first calculation we did today, we were figuring out molarity. So uh, let me just see here. If we have molarity, I'm just gonna squeeze it over here. In molarity, the very first thing we did was we took the, uh, the mass in grams and we divided that by the molecular weight. And then the next thing we did was we, we uh, divided it by the volume. So that's the formula for molarity. You can see it's actually very similar to the milla equivalent. In this case here, we're using um, milla, milligrams instead of grams. That's where the milla comes from, just part of the metric system. Uh, we have the volume there, we have the molecular weight. And the last thing we're thinking about is the uh, uh, the whole number around the charge. So two or one or three would be the most common numbers. So here is an example. It says convert 23 milligrams per liter of calcium to mill equivalents per liter. So basically what we need to do is just uh, use that formula up there 
So uh, I'm gonna just input in the formula. So we have 23 milligrams per liter, and then times the valence, which is of course two. It's a whole number, so I don't need a plus or a negative. It's just gonna use a whole number. And then the molecular weight is of course 40.1 grams per mole. Put that in my handy dandy calculator and I am going to get 1.1 milliequivalent per liter. So something like that. So very simple, just punching it into the formula. I have a few others here, like I said, just using that formula, it's very easy. So you can see 36 milligrams per liter. In this case here, uh, we also have a charge of two. Notice I'm not using the negative and divided by the molecular weight, 96 grams per mole. So the answer there is 0 0.75 milliequivalents per liter. The last one here is of course, uh, same idea. So 54 milligrams per liter times the valence, which is one and divided by the molecular weight, 61 grams per mole. So that's 0 0.89 mill equivalent per liter. Okay, so hopefully relatively straightforward. As I mentioned, this is not the most uh, important formula. Uh, this is the one where you can see uh, how it's all working though. So it's important for that reason. So usually what we do, there's the uh, um, formula for something we call the equivalent weight. So it's kind of like the molecular weight, except for we're uh, dividing it by the valence. So one or two, and in some rare cases, three. So it's kind of simplifying it. These things are always constant. It's always two for calcium um, for the valence. So uh, we have a constant and this is something you can look up on a table and something I will give you in any tests and exams for this class. So if you take a look at this equivalent weight for calcium, uh, very easy to calculate. We just take that molecular weight and we divide it by two. So we get basically 20, um, what, is, what are the units? Um, mill equivalent uh, grams per mill equivalent is what it is. It's actually milligram, no, that's right. Oh, there's my, uh, there's my formula there. Um, okay, so moving on. So we can take these two formulas and we can rearrange them a little bit and we're getting this formula here. So this is the most important formula you need to know for mill equivalents. Basically it says you're gonna take the parts per million and you're gonna divide it by the equivalent weight, which is something you'll be given on the test. So there's the note, it's gonna be on the test. So here's some examples. Uh, remember that formula, just going back here. Basically we are taking, so mill equivalent per liter equals the milligrams Per liter, liter divided by the equivalent weight. So there's my formula. So here we go, 23 milligrams per liter divided by 20 milligrams per mill equivalent. And the answer is 1.1 mill equivalents per liter. Those are the units. So I could do it for all of these. This one here is going to be uh, 36 divided by 48. And this one is going to be 54 divided by 61. Um, so you can punch that in your calculator and you should get these answers that are found here at the bottom. So uh, we can do the exact reverse. Uh, so you can see uh, the whole idea here in this case is to take the uh, equation that I just showed you and uh, basically we're going to rearrange it, right? So in this case here, we're trying to find um, our milligrams per liter. So just go back to our equation. Remember mill equivalents per liter is milligrams per liter divided by equivalent weight. So milligrams, or sorry, mill equivalent per liter is milligrams per liter divided by equivalent weight. So rearrange that formula, there we go. And so the milligrams per 
per liter are equal to the mill equivalents per liter times the equivalent weight. Okay, so in this case here, uh, it's just a matter of punching that in. So two mill equivalent per liter, and the equivalent weight is 74.6 milligrams per mill equivalent. So notice the mill equivalent are gonna cancel out. So here and here, they cancel out and we're gonna get milligrams per liter. So two times 74.6, it's 149.2 milligrams per liter. So you will see there's a part B on this slide that I'm not going to do in this video, uh, but you can uh, try those calculations and see if you can get these numbers and those two numbers there should both add up 249 if you add them together. Uh, here's some more sample questions and uh, I can, um, I'll let you do them uh, on your own time. Uh, you can see the answers are at the bottom. They shouldn't be too difficult. So as I mentioned before, these are used all over the place in these uh, mill equivalent bar graphs. You can see here's one I found on the internet. You can see usually what they do is they separate out the cations and the anions. And uh, usually what they do is they're colored or shaded in so you can see the uh, relative amounts of each of these. Here's the one that I showed you before, nice and colorful. You can see there's lots of chloride and lots of um, sodium and calcium for the cations. One more. And then there's this one here. I don't like this graph. Uh, it's kind of confusing. I think that all graphs should be easy to understand, um, but the kind of the key thing is to point out that the units are mill equivalents per liter. So what I uh, have showed you so far is what is gonna be on test one. Uh, everything starting here and forward will be on test two. So make sure that when you're studying, don't worry about the bar graphs, but that you do know how to do mill equivalents. What I wanna do is just talk a little bit about these mill equivalent bar graphs, and next day we're gonna draw one in a little bit more detail. This is a pretty common thing to show for a water analysis, is the water analysis will break out the cations and the anions, and uh, in many cases, uh, represent them as a mill equivalent bar graph. The bar graph can be horizontal or vertical. I like to make them horizontal. I figure it's, it's just easier for me to do on the board um, and in a PowerPoint slide uh, and, and those kind of things. So if you take a look at what they've done is they've converted all of these concentrations into mill equivalents per liter. And, uh, and then what they've done is they've stuck it all on this, uh, this bar graph. So the cations are one part and the anions are another part. So let me show you an example of how that's done. And uh, I'll do another example next day in a little bit more, uh, a little bit more slowly. But just briefly, I wanna show you today how, how these are produced. So this is what an analysis is gonna look like. You can see often they have the uh, anions and the cations, so there's the cations and there's the anions separated out. And uh, often they will have things in order um, of the highest concentration to the lowest, uh, not necessarily. Um, but uh, that's what we're seeing here. And so what you need to do is convert everything to mill equivalents per liter. So that's gonna be the first step. So remember your mill equivalents per liter, there's the formula again, right? Is your milligrams per liter divided by your equivalent weight. So in this case here, this is going to be 66 divided by 20. This one here is gonna be 18 divided by 12.2. This one here is gonna be 21 divided by 23 and so on. And I know I have them all calculated on the next slide. So I'm just gonna to go to that right now. So there's all the values. You can see calcium, magnesium, sodium, and so on. So the next thing uh, to make the bar graph is basically to plot this. And so you're gonna basically re uh, reproduce a bar that is uh, uh, equivalent 
or you know, to a scale of each of these mill equivalents. So I always suggest to students, and you'll have a ruler for, you'll need a ruler for test one, uh, that one centimeter equals one mill equivalent per liter. So in the case there of calcium, you can measure out basically 3.3 centimeters. And then the magnesium is another 1.5 centimeters. So that will bring us to 4.8. Notice I'm adding 3.3 plus 4.8. And lastly, you can see the other cation is sodium. And so adding a, an additional 0.9 on there to get a 5.7. So the anions are the same. Usually the formula is that you're gonna do the largest one uh, on the left, so largest here, and the smallest one over here. You can see whoever did this one, they didn't do it on the chloride. The chloride should have been the second one. It looks like there's a little bit more chloride. If you look at the, the values, there's more chloride uh, than the sulfate. So I don't think I actually made that particular graph, um, but uh, I'll make sure I do it right when I uh, produce it for next time. So that's basically what you're going to do going to make it look nice, use a ruler, all those kind of things. And uh, it's a pretty easy graphical representation to see what are the, the most reactive species in there or in terms of the quantity is calcium followed by magnesium and sodium for cations. And then of course, uh, bicarbonate for the, uh, for the anions. So uh, I'm going to come back to mill equivalent bar graphs next day. We're going to do another example, talk a little bit more about them and show you why mill equivalents are really important for uh, calculating hardness and alkalinity as well. So that's it for today. I will see you next day.